This is the CPAP and PEEP skill. Our first step is going to be to take our standard precautions. For this skill, we'll need eye protection and gloves. From there, we want to ensure our patient has an adequate blood pressure. We also want to then sit them in a high fowler's position to ensure ease of ventilations. From there, we're going to look for our indications for CPAP. Our indications are congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, pneumonia, asthma, and COPD. After assessing for indications for CPAP, we're now going to assess for contraindications. The contraindications are unconscious, unresponsive, the inability to speak or control your own airway, the inability to sit up, respiratory arrest or agonal respirations, nausea and vomiting, hypotension with a systolic below 90, suspected pneumothorax, cardiogenic shock, penetrating chest trauma, facial anomalies including burns and trauma, a closed head injury, an active upper GI bleed, or recent gastric surgery. Now we're going to gather and assemble our equipment for CPAP. The equipment that we'll need is an O2 supply, hoses and tubing, a CPAP machine, our CPAP mask with head straps, and our ETCO2 nasal cannula. From there, we're going to coach our patient on how to use the CPAP mask. We'll then attach our oxygen supply to the CPAP machine as well as the breathing portion to the CPAP machine, and then turn on the O2 in the machine. We'll then set the device parameters according to our local protocols and our manufacturer's recommendations. Recommended device parameters are Turn the rate dial to 8 to 12 per minute. Turn the oxygen concentration dial to the lowest setting between 28 and 29 percent oxygen. Titrate oxygen concentration to achieve an SpO2 greater than 94 percent. Set tidal volume to 10 to 12 milliliters per kilogram. Set pressure relief valve at plus or minus 4 centimeters of H2O. Occlude tubing to test for peak pressure required to activate pressure relief valve and adjust as necessary. After our CPAP machine has been assembled, we're going to go ahead and turn our oxygen on. From there, we're going to take our CPAP mask and we're going to place it over the nose and mouth of the patient while making sure the end tidal CO2 nasal cannula stays in place. We're then going to titrate our machine to the desired setting and then coach the patient to breathe normally and to adjust to the air pressure while securing the mask. After the CPAP mask has been placed appropriately, we're going to frequently reassess our patient for desired effects, such as decreased ventilatory distress, decreased adventitious lung sounds, absence of complications such as barrel trauma and a pneumothorax, and an SpO2 greater than 94%.